praise you.
each other We will work side by side We will work with each other We will work side by side And we'll guard each man's dignity And save each man's pride And they'll know we are Christians By our love, by our love Yes, they'll know we are Christians By our love And they'll know we are Christians By our love, by our love Yes, they'll know Father, we just come to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus tonight. And Lord, we just thank you for you're so good, you're so faithful, Lord. And Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, with so many things on our hearts, on our minds, Lord. And Father, you know each prayer request, you know each prayer, Father, before we even say it. So Lord, as we call upon you tonight, Lord, hear our hearts. We come with you with sincerity, we come with you with boldness, and we come with you with faith, knowing that you will answer each prayer according to your will and in your time. So Lord, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. You may be seated tonight. I want to welcome all those that are here in the sanctuary and welcome all those that are viewing online. Welcome to our prayer service tonight. I'm so glad that you have joined us here uh, we come tonight to pray. There have been, this has been a busy week here in this nation. And so there is so much going on. And so tonight we're going to pray for many things. You know, there was a, my brother-in-law uh, text me that they were caught in uh, some tornadoes today in Arkansas. And so there's uh, a lot of weather going on. There was tornadoes that hit Mississippi. Arkansas, just a lot of weather going on. Uh, th there was a school shooting this week. And the enemy is just out to kill, steal, and destroy this generation. And so we need to pray now more than ever for this nation, for, for our kids. Because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen next week or in a few months. But all I know is that it's going to get darker. It's going to get more evil in this nation. But we have to pray to ask the Lord to prepare our hearts for what's to come. Because I just know that as the devil is working overtime, that we need to be praying more and more because I know that prayer works. And there's nothing more powerful than a man or a woman that knows how to pray and has their prayers answered. And so we're going to pray tonight. I want to read a scripture before we start to pray. In First, First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 10 through 11, says this, Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength and seek his face evermore. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to seek the Lord. We may be tired. We may be spiritual tired, physic physically tired. But we come to seek his face, to seek his strength, because that's where we get our strength from. It's from our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight. If you want to stand, stand. If you want to sit, sit, kneel, or come to the altar. And those who are watching by, line, by uh, online, if you want to stand where you're at or pace your room, just pray. Lift up your voice tonight because the devil is not playing any games. He is very serious though, for those who are calling their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He hates that what we're doing tonight, he hates it. He wants us out to be out there doing God knows what, but we're here 
to call upon the name of Jesus tonight. So let's seek his face tonight. Father, we come to you tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, and through the power of the Holy Spirit tonight. Father, we come with heavy hearts. Lord, we're tired. We're physically tired, Lord, spiritually tired. But Lord, I pray for your strength, for your power, Lord. Lord, there has been so much going on in this nation, Father, this week. But Lord, you have told us in your word and you have, have prepared us in your word, Lord, that things in this world are going to get more darker and more darker as the days go on. But Lord, I ask for your, that you prepare our hearts, Father. Lord, I pray for discernment, Lord, in our lives. Lord, I pray for strength, Lord, for spiritual eyes, Lord, for spiritual ears, Lord. But Lord, I just ask you in the name of Jesus, Lord, we need your help, Father. We need your help, Father. And Lord, I pray right now over our children, Lord. Lord, you have set a responsibility for us parents, Lord, to guide our kids in the way that they should go through your word, Father. And Lord, I just pray, Lord, right now, as the devil is out to kill, steal, and destroy this generation and to destroy our lives, our walk with you, our marriages, Lord, everything is under attack, Father. But Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that, you, that we pray for your protection. Lord, that you hold us, Father, in the palm of your hand. Lord, that we may also every day seek your face. And we pray for the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, Lord, that we may walk forward, that we may walk in your light, Father. Lord, that we may not look to the right or to the left or to the back, but we always keep our eyes forward on you, Lord. Lord, for these families, Lord, that have lost lives, lost homes in these tornadoes, Father. Lord, yes, these things are materialistic, but Lord, the lives that were lost, Father, I pray for your, your comfort, your strength, Lord, your peace that surpasses all understanding for these families that have lost loved ones. Lord, through, through this, this terrible tragedy, Father, this tornado, I pray that out of this, that they will come to know you and serve you and have a relationship with you, Father. Lord, that they may not lean upon their own understanding, but lean upon your understanding. Lord, because as sometimes we don't understand why all these things happen. But, Lord, they happen for a reason. And so, Lord, I just pray, Lord, for all of these families that have lost loved ones, for all that have lost their possessions, Lord. Lord, supply all their needs. Lord, supply all their needs. Give them strength, Father. Lord, that they may lean upon you, Father, and serve you and look to you, Father, not to man, but look to you, Lord. And, Father, I just pray over this nation, Lord. I pray over our president, our vice president, and all those in the Senate, the House, Father. Lord, first I pray for their salvation, Lord. Lord, that they will come to know you and have a relationship with you, Father. Lord, some, many make fun of our president. But Lord, we pray for our president. Because Lord, prayer works. And I know, Father, Lord, that you, Father, will answer prayer. There's nothing impossible for you. And so, Lord, as we are gathered here tonight to pray, Lord, hear our hearts, Father. Hear our hearts, Father. We have family members who are lost, who are hurting, Father, who don't know you, who are at this time, if they were to, to go, Father, Lord, some may, ha may wake up in eternity in hell. But, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you speak to our family members, Father. Lord, intervene right now where they're at. Lord, I have family members who are lost, who know you, but they don't know you like we do. Father, intervene, Father. Lord, if they're smoking, if they're drinking, Father, or if anything, Father, Lord, I pray that they drop whatever they're doing and they pick up the Bible and, Father, and read it, apply it, practice it, because that is what you called us to do, to practice what we preach. And so, Lord, I just ask, Father, Lord, forgive us, Lord. Forgive us when we have failed you, Father, in our lives. Lord, you are so faithful in every aspect of our lives, Father. You are so faithful. You wake us up every morning. 
Lord, as we go to sleep at night, you supply us with the air, the food, the water that we need. And sometimes, Father, we take for granted these little things. But Lord, we, and I pray, Lord, that we always have a heart of gratitude towards you because you are our God and you are so faithful. And so, Lord, I pray right now, Father, Lord, I pray for my family, my wife, my boys, Lord, I thank you for them. Lord, I pray over their life, Lord, and for this, my church family, Lord, for our leaders and all those who come here to Grace Christian Center and those who are watching online, whether they're in, in, in Alvin or across the state or wherever they'll be watching, Father. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you protect them as, as they're coming and as they're going, Father. May your will be done, Father. May your will be done in their lives. Protect them from the hand of the enemy. Protect them, Father. Protect their eyes, their ears, Lord. Lord, the enemy is out to kill each and every one of us. But Lord, put our hearts, our faith, our mind, our eyes, our ears fixed on you forevermore. I thank you, Father. I praise you. I glorify your name for you are so good. You are so merciful. You are so majestic. You're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And one day, Father, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that you are Lord. And Lord, I can't wait for the, that moment when we leave this place, when we leave this place and we wake up in eternity in heaven with you, Father. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. May your will be done, Father. We thank you. We praise you. We honor and we glorify your name. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for our, the children, Lord, in this nation, the children here at our school, Lord. Lord, we see the breakdown of society, Lord, and it's affecting our youth tremendously, Lord. I'm asking you, Lord, to push back the hand of evil once again. You've done it time and time again. Satan has no authority. Satan has no power, Lord. Lord, he cannot compare to you. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Lord, you tell this king to rise and you tell another king to sit down. Everything is in your control. Lord, I have joy and peace tonight in my heart, Lord, because, Lord, I see what is happening, but I know, Lord, that you're still in control. I'm asking you, Lord, not just for the prodigals, not just for some of us in this room or watching online or some of our children who have walked away from the Lord or, or some of our children who are going through hard times in their walk with Jesus, whatever it may be, Lord. I'm asking you, Lord, to bind the hand of Satan once again and to bring home the prodigals to bring home those, Lord, who have not lost their faith, but they've been attacked tremendously, and they may have taken a knee to the enemy right now. Lord, I'm asking you, Lord, that you would strengthen them, that you would rise them, raise them up, Lord. Raise them up. Lord, rebuke every demonic power that is trying to destroy their lives, that is trying to bring them further deception and confusion. Lord, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, only you can bring deliverance. Lord, we don't need to go here. We don't need to go there. You, Lord, you just say the word and it will be done. Lord, I'm asking for deliverance. Lord, I'm asking, Lord, for strongholds to be broken. Lord, I'm asking for demonic powers to be cast out in the name of Jesus Christ. Right here, right now, Lord. Lord, bring glory to your name once again bring glory to your name fill your house lord so many have walked out of your house so many have walked away from the from the church of, of god lord so many lord are lost in in these times that we're in lord bring them home bring them home lord as you bring in the harvest bring those that have lost their composure that have lost their faith bring them back to the cross holy spirit i beg you lord your will be done in this lord these children in our school lord they're under tremendous attack lord 
Help them, Lord. Help them to have the peace that surpasses all understanding. Open up their minds, Lord, that they would understand the work that they need to apply in their school, Lord. Give them wisdom. Give them favor, Lord. Give them joy. Help them, Lord. Lord, I'm already getting phone calls and parents coming to visit the school. There's more coming. And so, Lord, I'm asking, Lord, for faithful men and women to be a part of the school. Lord, that they would count this as a top priority in their life for the these lives of these kids are at stake, Lord. So, Lord, we've been praying for musicians. We've been praying for singers. And your hand is moving on that. Lord, I'm praying continually for that. I'm praying for workers. But, Lord, I'm praying, Father, that you bring the harvest in and that these kids, Lord, that they would see your glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray. May you be glorified. Amen. 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 I want to pray. Father, I just ask for you to just please help me tonight, Father. I need the, the help of the Holy Spirit to be able to explain your word, Father. Father, I've prepared and it's, it's on you now. It's all, all you, Father. I want you to get all the glory and all the honor and everything that I say tonight, Father. I ask for you to remove my words, Lord, and fill my mouth with your words, Lord. Father, I ask for you just to help me tonight. I need your help in everything I do, including tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wonderful prayers, wonderful prayers. A lot of stuff going on in the world right now. A lot of uh, events that are going on. And it uh, seems like it's coming more and more and more uh, from one day to the next. And all we can really do as a church, as a body, is pray. And... I want to speak to the online community. If your church is not doing this and your church is not praying, then come and see us and come and visit us and come be part of this. And come. If not, then start your church praying. We all need to pray, not just this church, but each church, all through Alvin, all through Laporte, everywhere. We all need to be praying. What I want to speak to you tonight about is blessing. Uh, and I want to talk to you about the way that we look at blessings and what it means. Because I really think that the world has a twisted view of what a blessing is. And it, and it gets to the point to where everybody's blessed, from the saint to the sinner. No matter how you're living, what, what's going on, everybody's blessed. Everybody out there, everybody you talk to, they're blessed. And it's just a word that's just being thrown around. And it doesn't have the anointing on it that it should have because it comes from God. And a lot of it is getting twisted is, you know, even the word, just throwing the word, God bless you around or have a blessed day. Or here in Texas, we like to say, well, bless your heart. But that doesn't necessarily mean God bless you. That has a whole nother meaning to it. And if you're in Texas, you really know what that really means. And that's not bless you. So even in that, as in when you're trying to attack somebody, you're using the word God bless you. So we tend to just throw the word out there like it's nothing. And I think that tonight we need to look and see what's going on with it and what, what it is. Uh, we've said it. We've heard it. We've all said it. We all say it to each other. And uh, I tend to go to places or when I go to see somebody, I'll tell them God bless you instead of saying hello or instead of saying goodbye, I'll throw a God bless you in there. But when... I know what the blessing means and I know what it's about but as far as the world goes like I said I think that they're just using it as a word and it doesn't mean anything anymore and uh, I think that it's something we need to look at and find out what's going on and find out what is our perception of being blessed how do we look at that what is it is it flesh is it material or is it spiritual because those are two different things you can be blessed physically materially or spiritually worldly or heavenly which are two totally different blessings and I think that even though the Lord supplies everything that's going on in our lives we have to look at the true blessing that comes from God I want to read to you a scripture and it's out of Matthew 6 19 through 21 it says do not store up for yourself treasures on earth 
where moth and rust destroy. And there's, the thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. So in other words, what we're saying here, where your blessing is, is where your heart is. Because those are your treasures, and that's what we look at as being our treasures, and that's what we hold on to with a worldly value. Now, a lot of that comes even as a child. You're looking at what your parents are considering to be worth value. And it's very important. I didn't do this because I lived in the world when my children were little. But it's very important. Don't think that they weren't looking to see what we were doing. So coming to church, setting the standard, setting the things, letting them know where the blessing comes. And the blessing comes from us being in here tonight. All of us being together is a blessing. Being able to come to church is a blessing. Being able to pray is a blessing. Those are blessings. And those are things that I think we need to set in for our children to look at. Because I guarantee you that I was giving my children all kinds of things to look at. And it wasn't blessings. Now, they might have thought, and I worked hard. I worked hard. I was a good worker. I was, uh, I was a good person, but I wasn't saved. And good people don't go to heaven. Saved people go to heaven. And I knew what I was doing was wrong, but I just couldn't get away from it until the Lord drew me in. And thank God for that. What we also talk about is Billy Graham says he was not from this world and that he was just passing through. Now, if Billy Graham is saying we're not from this world, we've also all said it too. This is not our world. We're just passing through. But we want our blessings to come from this world. Now, why aren't our blessings? We should aim our focus on heaven. Just as it said, store up your treasures in heaven. So if we're saying we're not from this world, then our blessings need to come from heaven. Amen? Amen. We have to look at this and, and look at ourselves because this is something that we can change. It's if you go out and you change then people are going to look at you and say, now that's a true blessing. That's what's really going on. That's what we need to look at. Now, if you look at the world, who does the world consider to be blessed? Musicians, movie stars, and all of them, right? Are they blessed? I should think not. I don't think that the majority of them are. But we look at that as being, they are the, the blessed ones, the elites. The only problem with that, why are they blessed? Is it because of the big cars? Is it because of the big houses? That's what we look at. We look at their fame. And all of a sudden that makes them blessed. And that's, that's not what God has done in this world. God, did, well, let me put it to you this way. Did God take the movie stars and the actors and did he separate them from us to be blessed? It makes no sense. But we look at them, our children look at them as that they have something that they desire. Our children should be looking at us as when we come to church, this is our prized possession. This is our prized joy. Jesus is our prized possession. And that's where the blessing lies. And if we don't change the way that we do things, then our children, we're just setting it up for our children farther, or farther down the road. Now I wanna to talk to you a couple weeks ago, I was uh, at a job site always has trash at this job site and it just happened to all blow in one corner and I was looking I got out of the truck I'm like oh my goodness all this trash you know so I go and pick it up and I look down and there's a hundred dollar bill right there and I said look at you look at you and I was talking to God and I'm like you you know you're taking care of me again and I just that's what it is God taking care of me now he supplied that for me but did my does my hope does my blessings fall into that? I want to say this. When I received that money, I thanked God for that money, and I also prayed for the person that lost that money. Because somebody out there lost a $100 bill. Now, the, I, that's not the first time I found a $100 bill. The first time I found a $100 bill, I didn't pray for that person. Conviction came upon me, and I said, well, if it ever happens again, I'm going to pray for that person. And sure enough, it, it, it came through, and I, and I prayed for them. So, and I prayed a double blessing over them. So hopefully they find $200. You know, I want to give you an example in my life. So this morning I woke up. Woke up to do God's will, and I'm blessed. I woke up. I knew I was going to have to come here. And I want to tell you that this is a blessing. For me to be able to come up here and speak the word of God is a blessing. 
That is something that I don't take lightly. It is something that it, it, well, I talked to my wife about it on the way here. I said, can you believe, can you believe from where, where I came from, I'm up here speaking the word of God. Now I don't, I look at the, what the Lord has done in my life and it is completely a blessing to take me from where I was and to put me up here behind this pulpit. So I woke up this morning, I'm healthy, so I'm blessed today, right? Woke up this morning, do God's will, and I'm, I'm blessed. Healthy, blessed. Own my own business. I'm blessed, right? But what if, woke up this morning, house burned down, wrecked the car, lost that $100 that I found, barely woke up, health went downhill, and I lost my business. Am I still blessed? Am I still blessed? Yes. You know why I'm still blessed? Because I have Jesus. That I cannot lose. I cannot have, that cannot be taken away from me. If this could happen to Job, I want to pass that test like Job passed. I want to be the one to pass that test too. Who's to say that God doesn't come up and say, have you, have you looked at my uh, Michael? Have you tested him? And to put you through a test like that, just to see what you're going to do. Because I guarantee you, we go through tests all the time at our home. And me and Kimberly look at each other, well, we failed that test. We failed that test. But it's the conviction of the Holy Spirit to tell us that, that we know that the next time it comes along, we can pass the test. We can do it. And, it just, and I thank God for the conviction of the Holy Spirit to be able to tell me that. And, and if you're ever not getting the conviction of the Holy Spirit, you, that's when things get scary and you really need to check yourself. But thank the Lord, the conviction of the Holy Spirit is a blessing all in itself. And that's for sure. Now, don't get me wrong. These things that we have, they're blessings. And the Lord supplies these blessings. The Lord supplied that $100. I needed that $100. And the Lord supplied it. But, you know, as soon as I got home, I had to give it to Kimberly. But, you know, the, the $100 was there. And we needed it in the home. But there was been other times. There was other times we were driving with the tractor, had it on the trailer, had a flat on the tractor, or on the trailer. Couldn't pull the load. I had to pull over, put my tractor on the side of the road go and get the tire fixed, came back to get the tractor, and the tire cost me $125. There was somebody, there was a, a field of $20 bills, and it just happened to be, I think it was 100, just enough to cover what we had to have. And, and that's the Lord, it has to be. And I don't even walk upon a field of 20s, that is the Lord supplying my needs, blessing me. And, and, and I looked at that, and we thanked God for that. And Kimberly, we even found a half a dollar, half a twenty dollar bill, and she looked and looked and looked for that other half, and she said <laughs> she couldn't find it. And then she said, you know, I, I believe that the Lord gave me this because He wants me to keep it and to know that He supplies our needs. So we still have that half a twenty in there, unless my son found it and he, he's trying to do something with it. But we still have that that half a twenty in there. And I just want to tell you that the Lord does supply and He does help you. And the, but these we have to understand. They are not our blessed hope. Jesus is our blessed hope. And I want to read you a scripture that says that. So in Titus 2, 11 through 14. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live so soberly, righteously, and, and godly, in the present age, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might, not, might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Amen. So what we have there, that's the glorious... This is the blessed hope. The blessed hope is the glorious appearing of Jesus Christ. Now, when we look at that, we're looking at the glorious appearing. He's coming to get us. And where is he coming to get us to take us to? He's coming to take us to be with him. Now, when you get to heaven, yeah, there's streets of gold. There's probably manna sandwiches. There's all kinds of stuff up there. There's probably good stuff. But that's not the blessed hope. The blessed hope is to walk in and be by Jesus. Be with Jesus. That's the blessed hope. That's where we need to be. There's a lot of people out there that even, I don't, I don't know if I'm wording this right, but they're so scared of hell they want to go to heaven. 
instead of longing to be with Jesus, they have more of a fear of hell. Now, a fear of hell is a healthy thing, but the fear of the Lord is even more. And it's better. But we're going to heaven to be with Jesus. You know, me and Kimberly made a pact a long time ago that I'll get you there, you get me there. We're going to work together, work hard. We don't get each other there. Jesus gets us there. But we're going to work each with each other as a team, and we're going to do this. And that's what a marriage does, too, and you guys should do that. Make that pact. Get together. If, you, if I see something going on in her life, she'll, I'll say something. If she says something going on in my life, you better believe she's going to say something. She's going to say something to me. So we just, on a pact, we have to get this together, and we have to do this. And not because, and I do, when, when I get to heaven, you know, I'll let her come check out my house. She can come over and come visit for a little bit, you know. But the main thing is Jesus will be there with us. And that's what we need to, we long for Jesus here in this church. So why wouldn't we long to be with him up there? That's what heaven's about. Heaven has all kinds of wonderful things there. But when you get there and you meet Moses, he's going to say, hey, Jesus is over there. You see him? When you see Abraham, he's going to say, hey, Jesus is over there. Look, there's Jesus. Because they want to see him too. That's why we're going to heaven. We all want to be there together. Here's something for you to think about. If we took Jesus and we put Jesus in, in this situation, in today's standards, would he be blessed? If we took Jesus and we put him amongst us, would he be blessed? Would we look at him and say, oh, he's blessed? That's something that you got to think about because the way Jesus thinks about blessings is how we need to think about blessings. Now, I believe Jesus was blessed. Reading this book right here tells me that he was blessed. But if we put him today and we put him in our standards, that's how we need to look at it. I have a scripture that I want to read to you. It's Matthew 8.20. Matthew 8, 20. Jesus said, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Was he blessed? He didn't have a place to lay his head. He didn't have anywhere. He didn't have anything. Most of the time when he went to different places, he didn't bring food, and that he, you go to the houses and where the people were taking care of him. If you put him in today's standards, most of society wouldn't think he was blessed. If he came in here and preached a message, most of society wouldn't even listen to him because his message was too far out there. We've got to soften that up a little bit. What is this repentance thing you're talking about? We've got to look at how Jesus did things because that's how we have to do things. Better yet, now if we took Jesus, brought him here, and he looked at your life, would he look at you as being blessed? Would he say, oh yes, they're blessed? You need to think about that and you need to look at that. You need to take that home and evaluate that. Evaluate. If Jesus was here with us, would I consider him to be blessed? If Jesus was here with me and he looked at me, would he look at my life as being a blessing? Because I think we have it backwards. We have to get focused on that. I think that if Jesus came, he came in here, he would see a lot of Pharisees. A lot of Pharisees going on, including me. He would look at a lot of us and say, you're a Pharisee, you're a Pharisee, you're a Pharisee. And I'm not saying that to point you out and say something bad about you, but you have to look at your life. You have to look at how, what he considered to be evil at that time and what these men were doing and make sure that you're not doing it because those were given as examples. So if you're just looking at the Bible and you're reading this Bible as these were stories, like the story of Abraham, that's just a story of Abraham. It doesn't apply to my life. Then you're missing the Bible. If you're looking at this as a book of stories that doesn't apply to your life, then you're missing it. You're missing the whole picture. Because every story in here applies to you, me, and everything that's going on. From Abraham to Paul, all the way to the end where John was on the island. The things that they did are the things that we need to live by. Not look at those as some kind of story. Oh, well, Abraham had to leave his house at, at 80 years old. I'm 80 years old, but he didn't call me to do it. He just called Abraham to do it. Nonsense. Nonsense. Until he calls you home, there's work to do. There's work to do. Look at Miss Faye. There's work to do. She's here, faithfully, praying for every one of you. There's work to do. And that's because... The Bible says it is. 
The Bible told her to do that. That's why she's doing this. These are not just stories to her. This is something that's touching her heart and that she needs to continue on to do. And that's how we all need to look at this. We all need to do this. I want to talk to you a little bit about different type of blessings. If you go into the Beatitudes, okay, the Beatitudes are in Matthew 5, and it says, Blessed are the poor, mourning, meek, and hungry. Are those blessed? Are those people blessed? If we had them today and they were here, we'd be trying to help them because we'd be like, oh, poor, pitiful souls. But if you read through the Beatitudes, Jesus is calling these people blessed. Blessed are all of these people. And why? Because sometimes when you get put in those situations, when you get put in the, in the situation to where you have a, a, something bad going on in your life, something that to the human eye doesn't look like it should be going on. God will use that situation to, ble to bless you. To the human eye, the desperate situation, the heartache and the pain are things that we try and stay away from. We get in those situations, we try and pray our way out of it. Oh God, how fast can I get out of this? But maybe God has you there because in the end there's going to be a blessing. There's a lot of these people that went through the whole Bible and they, they all had hardship. But in the end, God blessed them. God blessed them. You look at Joseph, everything that he went through, the slavery, the prison. But if you read that story, it tells you each time God was with Joseph. God was with Joseph. So when you're in those hard times, God is with you. He's with you. We've been through some hard times at our home. And it took us a while to, you know, because at first your flesh wants to take over. Because I'm going to tell you, everything that we talk about up here goes against the flesh. It all goes against the flesh. It's unnatural. It's unnatural to us to, to be in the spirit because our body wants to be in the flesh constantly. So when you get in those bad situations, you constantly want to get out of them and find a way out of them. And oh, this is, this is from the enemy. Oh, this is from the enemy. You know, let me ask you, what if God told you to do something very, very, sell your home and go and do this and do that and do that? Oh, that's from the enemy. I'm not doing that, you know. But you have to understand, look at Abraham. The Lord spoke to him and he knew that it was the Lord. He knew. When the Lord told him to sacrifice Isaac, he knew it was from the Lord. The Bible says the next morning he got up. He didn't... He got up early and he took off. He took off and he walked for three days to make a point. So I'm telling you that when he heard the word of the Lord, he, he moved on it. And a lot of us are, well, you know, if, uh, if I got to have something, you know, if, if, I, if I go to work and there's, there's donuts on the table, then, then that's true. Then that's what, I, what the Lord's telling me is true. So we try and test the Lord with the golden fleece. And it's, listen to the Lord. If you know it's coming from the Lord, then it's coming from the Lord. Test the spirits. I'm not telling you not to do that. But the Lord will speak to you. That's for sure. I want to tell you this because the blessings might come through, through, through trials. In 2008, God sent a hurricane. And that hurricane changed my life. He changed everything that I ever did. It's changed me. At that point, I was a slave to the devil. I was a slave to the devil. He changed me and turned me into something completely different. And, you know, I thank God for that. Because I'd, I'd be dead. I'd be dead by now. You know, I have a, a friend of mine over here. He would come and he would talk to me about the Lord. And I'd tell him, get out of here. It's not time to talk about the Lord. It's time to drink beer. And he, didn't, he would come back. He'd keep trying to talk to me. He'd keep trying to talk to me. And, you know... I don't know if that's what did it, but I know that whenever the Lord was ready for me to come to him, it happened. But I do know that if you'd looked at my life during that period, in 2008 when that hurricane came through, I wouldn't have looked at it as a blessing. But it was a blessing in my life. Because I got Jesus out of that blessing. I got saved out of that. I, I'm a bond servant of Jesus Christ. You have to understand that these seeds that are planted sometimes hurt sometimes they irritate as paul said he had a thorn in his side he asked the lord to remove it the lord said no my grace is sufficient for you 
So oftentimes when we're talking to people, we're going out there. We have a son. We talk to him about the Lord all the time. Hard-headed as, as, as me and Kimberly, both of us. He, and, but the thing of it is, is we're planting the seed and we pray all the time, let some chemical plant worker come behind us and water it. Because a lot of times they don't really want to hear it from you, but they, somebody else out there, they want to hear it from. Because I didn't listen to it from my friend. It had to come from a stranger when I was at a, another job. And he didn't, even, he didn't even come at me with the gospel. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to. Re no, I just saw the Jesus in him. I just saw it. He had something about him. I'm like, what is this? What's going on here? Because I had anger. I had hate. I had hatred. I had all kinds of things in me. But I seen something different in him. And that's what changed me. And that's what pulled me that way. You know, we have to look at the apostles. They were all persecuted and martyred. Now, did they consider their lives to be blessed? I believe they did. Did Jesus consider their lives to be blessed? I believe he did. I consider their lives to be blessed because they're a blessing to me. Because through their trials and their tribulations, we got this. We got this book right here. That's how this came. Now, did they have new cars? Did they have big houses and big contracts in Hollywood? No, they didn't have any of that. They had Jesus. And that was their blessing. And that's what they found their blessing in. And that's what we need to focus and get our blessing back to. Because we have it all messed up. We have it all considered wrong. And we need to wake up. Because I want to tell you that when you have these trials going on in your life, the world is going to look at you like something's wrong with you. Some, oh, he's a Christian, but look at all this stuff that's going on. They must be doing something wrong in their house. And that's how the world looks at you. And that's, it's ridiculous. The problem, what's going on in the world today is everybody wants to be Solomon, but nobody wants to be a Joseph. Everybody wants to be a Solomon. Oh, give me the riches and give me all the kingdoms. But I don't want to be Joseph. Now, they want to be Joseph when he was under the, the second in command under the Pharaoh. They'll do that. But let's skip the slavery and the, and the jail part. And the slavery and the jail part got him ready for that position when he was at the top. Those got him ready. The, the bear and the lion that David killed got him ready for Goliath. Got him ready for, to be where he was at in his position. So those hard things set you up for where God wants you to be. The problem with material blessings is that the devil will use them against you. The enemy will come against you with those things. Look at, he did it with Job. You take the things away from him that you're helping him with and he'll curse you to his face. That's what the enemy told God. How dare him tell God that? That's what he told God. Now I want to say right here, this is something that we need to look at because if we have our blessings, I'm telling you, your car, your car will break down. Your house will break down. Everything that you're holding on to will break down. If you're holding on to a car and, oh, this car, I've been holding on to it for years. I kept it in the garage. As soon as you pass away, your kids are going to sell it. Your kids are going to sell it. And you've been holding on to this treasure for all your life. I'm telling you now, these, these things that you have today, they're just possessions. But until you grab hold of the blessing of Jesus Christ, you don't have it. I'm telling you today, when you leave here, look at your possessions differently and hold on to the possession of Jesus Christ. Because nobody can take that away from you. Nobody can take that away from you. I have that said today because the, my, my title of this message is End Time Blessings. I want to talk to you about the people at the Twin Towers at 9-11. Those people, do you think that when it was going down and they knew that it, was, it was fixing to happen, that they were worried about their car, that they were worried about their house, that they were worried about anything that the world considers to be a blessing? No. There was probably convert after convert after convert when all that was going down and everybody was crying out to Jesus. And all it takes is that little prayer because the, one of the greatest prayers that was ever preached in the Bible was remember when you, when you get to your kingdom. And that was a man that, he didn't know God, 
But those words right there got him to where he needed to be. So I'm telling you that at the time comes, when we're coming to the end of our time, things are going to get very hairy and very, very, very bad and very weird. And I'm telling you that do not hold on to your worldly possessions. Hold on to Jesus. We have to. That's the end time blessing. That's the glorious hope of him coming. When we, we constantly talk about longing for his coming, that's the blessing that we need to do. That's the blessing that we need to have. Now this message today is doing nothing but pointing you to Jesus. And that's how we need to preach up here. Everything we say up here needs to point you to Jesus. When they play up here in this band, it's not to them. It, they should be pointing you to Jesus. Everything that's going on in this church should point you to Jesus. Because that's what's important. Nothing else is important. Nothing. What is, whatever's not done for Jesus will not last forever. Will not last forever. Those are the things that are going to go on forever and ever in heaven. Those are the things we need to hold on to. You can't go to heaven with money in your pocket. It's not going to happen. You go to heaven holding on to your treasures, you're not going to be able to let go and grab a hold of Jesus. I'm telling you now to let go of the world and grab a hold of Jesus because he's up there. And that's where we're headed, right? That's where we're going. That's what we're promised. That's what we want, right? That's why we're here. This is why it's a Friday night. And instead of being anywhere else, we're here. We're here. So my message to you today is Jesus is the blessed hope. And the hope of him coming to bring us home. Amen? Amen. So let me go ahead and pray. Amen. Father, I, we don't know this man's name, but Father, we just ask for in the name of Jesus, you just take all the strongholds off of him, Father. We just ask that you just cleanse him, Lord. Give him a new desire in his heart and in his body, Father. Father, we ask that you just have him just destroy everything that he has of drugs, Lord, and just to reach out to you. Father, we ask for you to draw him near right now, Father. Father, he needs sobriety, Lord. He needs you, Lord. He needs to let go of the, the treasures that he's holding on to, of the drugs that he, he considers a treasure, Father. And we ask for you, Lord, to just have him open his hands for you, Father. Father, we know you're going to, to help him, Father, in your time and in your will, Father. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Father, I just want to pray over this service and what we have tonight, Father. And I just ask that you continue to bless over this church and bless over our word. Is, and then just help us to be an anointed vessel for you, Father. And for you to get all the glory every time we come up here, Father. Father, I just ask that you just please bless over everybody that's in here, Lord. Bless over them and draw them near to you, Lord. Make them focus on the things of you, Father, and not the things of the world. Help us today, Father. We need your help. We need to get out of the flesh and get into the spirit, Father. And we just ask you to please help us in Jesus' name. Thank you all so much for listening. Let's give God praise in his house today. Amen.